How are you guys doing? Today is Friday, May 13th, 2022. I'm James Sims, and for this episode of The Elite, I'm going to review yesterday's Elite matchups and performances from May 12th. And of course, I'm going to preview everything that's going on today as we navigate through the world of sports one day at a time. Taking a quick step back and looking at where we are, starting with the NBA, there are now seven teams left competing as one team was eliminated from the second round yesterday. And of course, there are three teams that are facing four teams that are now facing elimination in this playoffs. Taking a look at what's going on in the NHL, uh, now with the Minnesota Wild being eliminated, there are now 14 teams left in the Stanley Cup. There are still six series in the first round that need to be done, as the first series for the second round has are the first matchup for the second round has already been set up. Not to mention, looking at what's going on with baseball, we are in the second month of the MLB season um, as the as we are about to pro- approach the actual one month mark of the year, if we haven't already passed it. Taking a look at what's going on with FIFA, or at least with European soccer, we are nearing the end of a lot of domestic seasons. So you are going to see teams fight for like the last bits of spots so that they can play in international tournaments outside of their country. With that said, starting with the NBA, there were two second round or um, conference semifinal games last night. Starting off in Philadelphia, the four seed 76ers hosted the Miami Heat, who came into this um, playoffs as the top seed in the East. Miami led the series 3-2, to two, and this would come after Miami had gone on and beat the Sixers in Game 3 in order to make it here. They would win by 35, and then in Game 4, they would go on to beat the Heat by 9. They won it 99-90 to 90 after they went on to outscore the Sixers by 10 points in the third quarter. That was really the difference in this game as it was close outside of the third. On the losing end of this matchup, the four-seed 76ers at home were led in scoring by their elite starting center, this year's regular season scoring champ Joel Embiid, along with their point guard Tyrese Maxey. Embiid finished with 20 points, 12 rebounds, and 2 assists in 44 minutes. He shot 7 for 24 from the field, 2 for 8 from 3, and he made all 4 of his free throws. Tyrese Maxey had 20 points in 42 minutes. He shot 9 for 22 from the field and made his only free throw. Um, Their starting power forward, Tobias Harris, had 14 points, 8 rebounds, and 2 blocks in 30 38 minutes. Uh, their shooting guard off the bench, Shake Milton, finished with 15 points and two steals after Danny Green only played three minutes. Um, Shake Milton, or I guess alongside those guys, their elite starting shooting guard and former MVP, James Harden, went on to finish with 11 points, not four rebounds, nine assists in 43 minutes. In his final game of the year, he would shoot four for nine from the field and three for seven from three. On the winning end of this matchup, the top seed Miami Heat were led in scoring by their elite starting um, small forward Jimmy Butler. Jimmy Butler would go on to finish with 32 points, 8 rebounds, 4 assists, and 2 blocks in 43 minutes. He would go on to shoot 13 for 29 from the field, 2 for 6 from 3, and he went on to shoot 4 for 6 from the foul line. Um, the Heat starting shooting guard Max Strews finished with 20 points, 11 rebounds, and 5 assists in 40 minutes. He would go on to shoot 6 for 14 from the field, 4 for 10 from 3, and 4 for 5 from the free throw line. They are starting power forward P.J. Tucker at 12 points, 9 rebounds, and 2 blocks in 39 minutes. They're starting center Bam Adebayo finished with 10 points, 8 rebounds, and 2 steals in 34 minutes as he shot a perfect 5 for 5 from the field. And then their shooting guard off the bench, Tyler Hero, had 10 points in 16 minutes. With this win, the top seed Miami Heat have won this series and they are the first team to advance to the conference final round um, as they will face off against either the winner of the Milwaukee Bucks, the defending NBA champs, the three seed, or the two seed Boston Celtics. At this moment, the Bucks lead this series three to two as the Bucks as the Bucks and the Celtics both have a chance of making it through to the Heat. But with this loss, the Philadelphia 76ers season has come to an end. Um, congratulations to the Sixers, but now it's Miami's time to go through. Taking a look at the second playoff game that happened yesterday, the four seed in the Western Conference Dallas Mavericks hosted the top seed in the West, the Phoenix Suns. In this matchup, I guess coming in, the Suns led the series 3-2 to two after picking up a 30-win 
30 point win at home. And the Mavericks are going to beat the Suns 113 to 86. They would win this game by 27 after they outscored the Suns by 12 in the second quarter. Not to mention they were going to outscore the Suns by 12 in the second half. On the losing end of this matchup, the top seed Phoenix Suns out west were led in scoring by their starting center, DeAndre Ayton. Ayton finished with 21 points and 11 rebounds in 30 minutes. He shot 10 for 16 from the field. And then their elite starting shooting guard, Devin Booker out of Kentucky, finished with 19 points, 8 rebounds, 3 assists, and 8 turnovers in 39 minutes. Booker shot 6 for 17 from the field and made all 7 of his free throws. Their elite starting point guard, Chris Paul, finished with 13 points, 2 rebounds, 4 assists, 2 steals, and 5 blocks in 36 minutes. He shot 4 for 7 from the field, 3 for 5 from 3, and he made both of his free throws. On the winning end of this matchup, the hometown Dallas Mavericks were led in scoring by their elite starting shooting guard, Luka Doncic. He finished with 33 points, 11 rebounds, 8 assists, and 4 steals in 35 minutes. He shot 11 for 26 from the field. He shot 2 for 8 from 3 and 9 for 14 from the foul line. Their starting small forward, Reggie Bullock, finished with 19 points, 7 rebounds, and 2 steals in 40 minutes. He shot 7 for 15 from the field and 5 for 11 from 3. Their starting point guard, Jalen Brunson, finished with 18 points and 3 steals in 35 minutes. He shot 6 for 14 from the field and made all 6 of his free throws. Their uh, point guard off the bench, Spencer Dinwiddie, finished with 15 points in 21 minutes. With this win, the 4 seed Dallas Mavericks have now evened this series uh, 3 to 3 as we now approach Game 7. The winner of Game 7 will advance to the Western Conference Finals to face off against either the 2 seed Memphis Grizzlies or the 3 seed Warriors as the Warriors lead that series 3 to 2. Um, as, like I said, the, the winner of game seven advances game seven will be in Phoenix on Sunday. So of course that's going to be a highly anticipated matchup. Taking a look at what's going on today in playoff basketball, we are going to see the other game sixes. The first of them is going to be in Milwaukee. The defending NBA champs, Milwaukee Bucks have a chance to eliminate the second seed Celtics as the Bucks lead this series three to two. This came after the Bucks were able to win Game 5 by 3 points in Boston. The Celtics have to win Games 5 and 6 if they want to advance. The winner of this series will face off against the Miami Heat, who just eliminated the Philadelphia 76ers. At 10 o'clock on ESPN right after that, in the Chase Center, the 3 seed in the West Golden State Warriors are set to host the 2 seed Memphis Grizzlies. The Warriors currently lead this series 3-2. to two. Um, This came after the Grizzlies won Game 5 by, what, 39 in front of their hometown fans. So that is what's going on with that series. The Warriors have to win one of the next two while the Grizzlies have to win the next two games if they want to advance to the next round. The winner of this round faces off against the winner of game seven between the Phoenix Suns and the Dallas Mavericks. With that said, taking a look at what's going on with the NHL playoffs, the first of the games, there were four uh, game sixes yesterday. The first of them was in Boston. The Boston Bruins, who would come into this series as the Eastern Conference, the first wild card seed, would go on to host the Carolina Hurricanes, who came into this matchup with the top seed in the Metropolitan Division. Uh, the Hurricanes were leading this matchup 3-2 to two coming in, and then the Bruins would go on to tie this series at three after winning it 5-2. to two. Um, Boston would score the first two goals of the game as Carolina never even had a chance to score. Um, no one would even score in the first period. Going into the third, it was 2 nothing Boston, but then they would outscore them Carolina 3-2 to two in that third period to run away with it. The top star of this game went to Brad Marchand, Boston's left winger, as he had a goal and an assist. Um, the second star went to Boston's goalie, Jeremy Swayman, as he had 23 saves on the night. The third star of the game went to Boston center, Charlie Coyle, as he had a goal and an assist. With this win, the series is now tied at three. The winner of Game 7 will be the team that advances to face off against the winner between the New York Rangers and the Pittsburgh Penguins. Game 7 will be held in Raleigh tomorrow on ESPN. Looking at the second of the four games yesterday as it took place in Tampa Bay, the defending back-to-back -back Stanley Cup champs, Tampa Bay Lightning, who came into this playoffs as the third best seed in the Atlantic, hosted the second seed in the Atlantic, the Toronto Maple Leafs. Coming into game six, the Maple Leafs led this series three to two after they had gone on to win game five at home, beating Tampa by one goal in regulation. 
Uh, in game six, the Tampa Bay Lightning would end up beating the Maple Leafs four to three in overtime. Uh, it would be a back and forth game as Tampa Bay scored the first two goals of the game. Toronto would score three unanswered to take a three to two lead. Nikita Kucherov's power play goal in the third period was the only goal, only goal of the third period, and it gave the Lightning the win as the Lightning score. It gave them at least enough to tie and go to overtime as the Lightning scored in every period. In overtime, it would be a goal from Braden Point that gave them the goal and gave them the win. The top star of the game went to Braden Point, Tampa Bay center, as he had a goal and an assist. The second star for Tampa Bay, or for the second star of the game, went to Toronto center John Tavares, as he had two goals. The third star of the game went to Tampa Bay center Anthony Sorelli, as he would go on to finish with a goal. Uh, so with this win, the series is now tied at seven, as the defending back-to-back -back Stanley Cup champs are still facing elimination. Game seven will be held in Toronto tomorrow on TNT. The winner of this matchup will face off against the winner between the Florida Panthers, the number one seed in the Atlantic Division, and I believe the President's Cup winner, as they will host the or as the winner will be to be between either the Panthers and the Capitals. The Panthers currently lead that series 3-2. to two. Taking a look at the third playoff game that was played yesterday, it would be between the two and three seeds in the Central Division, as coming into this matchup, the St. Louis Blues led the Wild 3-2. to two. This would be after the Blues had won game five. They won games four and five to take over the series. They would go on to win game six, as they have now won three unanswered to advance to the second round. They would win this game 5-1 to one as Minnesota's lone goal came after St. Louis's fourth goal of the game in the third period. Um, and on the winning end of this matchup, of course, St. Louis will be the second team to advance to the second round as the Colorado Avalanche are already waiting on them. The first star of this game was Ryan O'Reilly, St. Louis's center, as he had a goal. Uh, the second star of this game went to St. Louis's goalie, Jordan Binghamton, as he had 25 saves, only allowing one goal on the night. The third star for the game went to St. Louis's left winger, David Perrault. He would finish with two assists. With this win, like I said, St. Louis has advanced to the next round. They will be facing off against the number one seed from their division, the Colorado Avalanche. This comes after the Avalanche had swept the second wild card seed in the West, the Nashville Predators. Um, and then taking a look at where the Minnesota Wild are after this loss, of course, they are the second team that has been eliminated from the Stanley Cup playoffs. And there are now 14 teams that are left standing. Taking a look at the third or the, the fourth and final game that took place last night, um, the two seed from the Pacific Division, the Edmonton Oilers, would go to Los Angeles to beat the three seed Kings four to two to even the series up at six. This came after the Kings had won games four and five to take the series lead. They won game five by one in overtime. The Oilers would even up their series after they had scored the first two goals of this game. They would let the Kings tie the game up in the very beginning of the third. They would take the lead right back with a goal from Tyson Bari and then Evander Kane's seventh goal of the playoffs would of course be what they needed to win um, but looking at the stars of this game the top star went to Connor McDavid Edmonton center as he had a goal and two assists the second star of the game went to Matt Roy Los Angeles's defender as he had an assist for himself the third star of the game went to Edmonton's defender Tyson Bari as he had a very big goal for the team, um, the goal that actually gave them the lead. With this win, the series is now tied at three, and the winner of Game 7 will be the team that advances to face off against either the Calgary Flames or the Dallas Stars. Game 7 will be held in Edmonton tomorrow on ESPN. So, of course, that's going to be what's going on there. So that's what playoff hockey is looking like going into today, as there are now 14 teams left. And looking at how every game today is a game six, we have three teams that are facing elimination today. At seven o'clock on TNT and PPG Paints Arena in Pittsburgh, um, the six seed in the Metropol the three seed in the Metropolitan Division, the Pittsburgh Penguins are set to host the two seed New York Rangers. The Pittsburgh Penguins currently lead this series three to two. But in the last game in Game 5, the Rangers facing elimination were able to beat the Penguins at home. The Penguins have to win either Game 6 or Game 7 to make it through. The Rangers have to win Game 6 and Game 7 to make it through. The winner of this faces off against the winner of Game 7 between the Carolina Hurricanes and the Boston Bruins.
Taking a look at the second game that's going to be going on today in the Eastern Conference, the second wild card seed, the Washington Capitals, are set to host the top seed in the Atlantic Division, Florida Panthers. The Panthers currently lead this series three to two after they were able to win games four and five. Um, the Panthers have to win either game six or game seven to make it through. Trailing three to two, the Capitals have to win game six and game seven if they want to make it through to the next round. And taking a look at what's going on at 9.30 on TNT, the Dallas Stars, the first wildcard team in the West, are facing elimination as they host the number one seed in the Pacific Division, the Calgary Flames. Um, Calgary leads the series three to two after they were able to win game four to even up the series um, at two and they won game five at home by two goals. Calgary has to win either game six or game seven to make it through to the next round. Dallas has to win game six and game seven. The winner of this series will face off against either the Edmonton Oilers or the Kings. But right now, um, if the Dallas Stars lose, they're out. If the Calgary Flames lose, they still got another game to play. So that's what playoff hockey is looking like right now. Taking a look at what's going on now in regular season MLB baseball, starting off in our nation's capital, the Washington Nationals would host the New York Mets. The Mets would go on to beat the Nationals 4-1 to as the Nats' lone run came in the bottom of the ninth after the Mets had already scored. On the losing end of this matchup, the hometown Washington Nationals would see their starting pitcher, Joan Adon, pick up the loss. Adon would allow three earned runs off of three hits and 3.2 innings pitched. He would strike out two batters and walk five. With his loss, Adon is one in six. Um, their, uh, in their batting lineup, their elite right fielder, Juan Soto, would go two for four with an RBI and a run, as his eighth home run of the game was the Nats' lone run of the game. On the winning end of this matchup, the New York Mets would see the win go to their starting pitcher, Taiwan Walker. Taiwan Walker allowed no earned runs off of three hits and seven innings pitched. He struck out a batter and walked one. With this win, he's now 1-0. In the Mets batting lineup, their left fielder Mark Canna went three for four with three RBIs and two runs. He had his second home run of the year. With this win, the New York Mets are now 22 and 11. That is the worst, or I'm sorry, that is the best record in the National League East. They are tied with the LA Dodgers for the best win percentage in the National League as their 22 wins are the most wins in the National League as of right now. Only the Yankees have more wins. The Mets have won six of their last 10 games. They are sitting six and a half games ahead of the second place defending champs Atlanta Braves and the Philadelphia Phillies who are tied with them. With this loss, the Washington Nationals are 11 and 22. That is the worst record in the National League East. They've lost six of their last 10 games. They are now sitting 11 games behind the New York Mets. They're holding the second worst record in the National League as only the Reds have a worse record than the Nationals in that league. Taking a look at what happened in Detroit, the Tigers went on to host the Oakland Athletics. Um, after the Athletics scored the first three runs of the game, the Tigers would then go on to tie it up in the bottom of the sixth off of a double from Miguel Cabrera. It would be a two-run home run from Seth Brown that set the A's apart so they could win it 5-3. to three. On the losing end of this matchup, the hometown Detroit Tigers were led out by their starting pitcher Bo Brieske. Brieske allowed three runs off of four hits in the six innings he pitched. He would strike out two batters and walk three. The loss would go to the Tigers' setup relief pitcher and former Rookie of the Year, Michael Fulmer. Fulmer allowed two earned runs off of one hit in the eighth inning as he struck out a batter and walked one. With this loss, Fulmer is one and two. In the Tigers' batting lineup, their center fielder, Willie Castro, went two for four with a run. Their catcher, Tucker Barnhart, went two for three with an RBI. On the winning end of this matchup, the Oakland Athletics were led out by their starting pitcher, James Caprillian. Caprillian allowed two earned runs off of three hits in the five innings he pitched. He struck out a batter and walked three. The win would end up going to the A's setup relief pitcher, A.J. Pook. Pook allowed no earned runs off of one hit in the seventh and eighth innings. He would strike out a batter. With this win, he's now 1-0. The save would end up going to the A's closer, Danny Jimenez. Jimenez would go on to allow no earned runs in the ninth as he struck out a batter. He picked up his sixth save of the year. In the Athletics batting lineup, nobody on their team would finish with more than one hit as their outfielder, Seth Brown, would go on a hit, or their, their first baseman, Seth Brown, hit his third home run of the season. With this win, the Oakland Athletics are now 14-19. and 19. That is the worst record in the American League West as they've now won their last three games. They've won four of their last 10. They are sitting seven and a half games behind the division-leading Houston Astros at the moment. With this loss, the Detroit Tigers are 9-23. and 23. That is the worst record in the American League Central and the worst record in the American League. They're the only team in the American League who still has a single-digit amount of wins. 
They've lost their last three games. They've lost nine of their last 10. They are sitting nine games behind the division leading Minnesota Twins. Right now, the only team that has a worse record than the Tigers in the major leagues are the Cincinnati Reds. Taking a look at what happened in Minneapolis, the Minnesota Twins hosted the Houston Astros, the defending American League champs. The Astros would go on to beat the Twins 11-3 after the Twins scored the first run of the game. The Astros took the lead off of a Jose Siri RBI in the top of the second and really kind of ran away with it after that. On the losing end of this matchup, the hometown Minnesota Twins saw the loss go to their starting pitcher, Chris Archer. Chris Archer allowed five runs off of five hits in the three innings he pitched. He would strike out two batters and walk three. With this loss, Chris Archer is 0-1. In the Twins batting lineup, their second baseman, Jorge Polanco, went two for four with two RBIs. Their left fielder in this matchup, Hilberto Celestino, went two for four with a run. And then their shortstop in this matchup, Royce Lewis, would end up going two for four. On the winning end of this matchup, the Houston Astros were led out by Jose Urquidy. Urquidy allowed one earned run off of three hits in the three innings he pitched. He struck out three batters. The win would go to the Astros' first relief pitcher, Brian Abreu. Abreu allowed one earned run off of two hits in the two innings he pitched. He would strike out four batters and walk one. With this win, he's now 2-0. In the Astros batting lineup, their elite second baseman, Jose Altuve, went two for five with three RBIs and two runs. He went on to hit his fifth home run of the year. Their elite third baseman, Alex Bregman, went two for four with an RBI and two runs. Their left fielder, Jordan Alvarez, went two for five with a run. Their right fielder, Kyle Tucker, went two for four with two RBIs and a run as he had his fifth home run of the year. Um, their shortstop in this matchup, uh, Jeremy Pena, would end up going two for four with three RBIs. Their center fielder, Jose Siri, would end up going two for five with an RBI and a run. With this win, the Houston Astros are now 20 and 11. It is now, or I guess following this matchup, uh, they are now sitting at 20 and 11. Uh, that would lead into that second matchup that they played for their double header, where they would beat the Twins five to nothing in the second matchup. Uh, they would hold the Twins to seven hits, even though the Twins could not score. On the losing end of game two, the loss was picked up by their starting pitcher, Josh Winder. Winder would allow four runs off of six hits and 3.1 innings pitched. He struck out two batters and walked three. With this loss, he's two and one. In the Twins batting lineup, their first baseman in this matchup, Luis Arise, would go two for three. Also, their center fielder, Nick Gordon, would end up going two for four. On the winning end of game two, the Astros saw the win go to Luis Garcia. Garcia allowed no earned runs off of five hits in the five innings he pitched. He would strike out nine batters and walk two. With this win, he's three and one. In the Astros batting lineup in game two, their shortstop, Jeremy Pena, would go three for three with a run. Their designated hitter, Jordan Alvarez, would go three for five with three RBIs and two runs as he had his ninth and tenth home runs of the year. With this win, the Houston Astros are 21 and 11 with both of these wins. Their 21 and 11 record is the best record in the American League West. They are holding the second best record in the American League when percentage wise. They have now won their last 10 games. Their 10 game winning streak is, of course, the longest active winning streak in baseball right now. They are sitting half a game ahead of the second place Los Angeles Angels within their own division. Um, with these losses, the Minnesota Twins are 18 and 14. That is still the best record in the American League Central. They are currently on a three game losing streak. Their three game losing streak is only dwarfed by the Toronto Blue Jays in the American League. The Minnesota Twins have now lost five of their last 10 games. They are now sitting two games ahead of the second place Chicago White Sox and the Cleveland Guardians, who are tied with them. Um, and that's what they're looking like. Taking a look at what happened in St. Louis, the St. Louis Cardinals went on to host the Baltimore Orioles from the American League. The Orioles would end up beating the Cardinals 3-2 after scoring the first three runs of the game. On the losing end of this matchup, the hometown St. Louis Cardinals saw the loss go to their starting pitcher, Steven Matz. Matz allowed three earned runs off of seven hits in the 6.2 innings he pitched. He would strike out seven batters. With this loss, Steven Matz is 3-3. Three and three. 
In the Cardinals batting lineup, nobody on their team would finish with more than one hit, as that would be attributed to great pitching from the Orioles. On the winning end of this matchup, the Orioles were led out by Brian Baker. Baker allowed no earned runs off of one hit in 2.1 innings pitched. He would strike out three batters before he was pulled in the third. The win was given to the Orioles' first relief pitcher, Keegan Akin. He allowed no earned runs off of one hit as he would go all the way through the fifth. He would go on to strike out four batters and walk two. With this win, he's now 1-0. The save would go to the Orioles' closer, Felix Bautista. Bautista would allow no earned runs in 1.1 innings pitched as he, wa- as he allowed a hit. He finished off the eighth inning and would pitch the entire ninth, picking up his second save of the year. In the Orioles' batting lineup, their first baseman and former comeback player of the year, Trey Mancini, or I guess reigning comeback player of the year in the American League, Trey Mancini went two for four. He was the only player with a multi-hit game. With this win, the Baltimore Orioles are 14-18. and 18. That is the fourth best record in the American League East. They've won six of their last 10 games. They are sitting nine and a half games behind the division-leading New York Yankees. With this loss, the St. Louis Cardinals are 17-14. and 14. That is the second best record in the National League Central. They've lost five of their last 10 games. They are now sitting two and a half games behind the division-leading Milwaukee Brewers. Taking a look at what happened in Pittsburgh, the Pirates from the NL Central hosted the Cincinnati Reds. The Reds were able to shut the Pirates out. They won it four to nothing uh, as they held the Pirates to only four hits all game. On the losing end of this matchup, the hometown Pittsburgh Pirates would see the loss go to their starting pitcher, JT Brubaker. Brubaker would allow two earned runs off of four hits in the five innings he pitched. He would strike out three batters and walk two. With this loss, he's 0-3. In the Pirates batting lineup, their left fielder Ben Gamel went two for four. On the winning end of this matchup, the Cincinnati Reds would see the win go to their starting pitcher, Connor Overton. Overton allowed no earned runs off of three hits in the 6.1 innings he pitched. He struck out a batter and walked four. With this win, he's 1-0. In the Reds batting lineup, their catcher Tyler Stevenson went three for four with two RBIs and two runs. He had his fourth home run of the year. Their right fielder, Tyler Naquin, went two for four with an RBI. With this win, the Cincinnati Reds are now 8-24. and That is the worst record in the National League Central as they've won their last two games and they've won five of their last 10. The Reds are now sitting 12 games behind the division-leading Milwaukee Brewers. They hold the worst record in the majors, and they and the Detroit Tigers are the two teams that are left in the MLB with a single-digit amount of wins. Uh, taking a look at where the Pirates are following this loss, they are now 13-18. and 18. That is the third best record in the NL Central. They've lost six of their last 10 games. They are now sitting six and a half games behind the division leading Milwaukee Brewers at this point in the year. Taking a look at what happened in Arlington, the Texas Rangers hosted the Kansas City Royals. The Rangers would go on to beat the Royals 3-1. to They would go on to score the first two runs of the game as the Royals never really had a chance to really come back in it. On the losing end of this matchup, the Kansas City Royals were led out by their starting pitcher in this matchup, Jonathan Heasley. Heasley picked up his first loss of the year as he allowed one earned run off of four hits in 3.1 innings pitched. He would strike out a batter and walk four. With this loss, Heasley is 0-1. In the Royals batting lineup, nobody on their team would finish with more than one hit, as this would be attributed to great pitching from the Rangers. On the winning end of this matchup, the hometown Rangers saw the win go to their starting pitcher, Taylor Hearn. Hearn would allow no earned runs and only one hit in the five innings he pitched. He would strike out five batters and walk three. With this win, he's now 2-2. Two and two. The save would go to the Rangers' closer, Joe Barlow. Barlow allowed no earned runs in the ninth inning as he allowed a hit. He would strike out a batter and walk one. He would pick up his sixth save of the year. With this win, the Texas Rangers are now 13-17. and 17. That is the fourth best record in the American League West, win percentage-wise. They've won seven of their last 10 games. They are sitting seven games behind the division-leading Houston Astros. With this loss, the Kansas City Royals are now 10-19. and 19. That is currently the fourth best record in the American League Central. They've lost seven of their last 10 games. They are sitting six and a half games behind the division-leading Minnesota Twins at this point. We're taking a look at what happened in Chicago. The White Sox hosted the New York Yankees, who are holding on to the best record in baseball right now. The Yankees would go on to beat the former AL Central champs 15 to 17. The White Sox did go on to take a lead in the second inning. They were up three to two. Uh, the Yankees would take the lead right back off of a two-run home run from Giancarlo Sand after Anthony Rizzo tied it up with a triple. 
The White Sox would fight back to tie it up back at seven in the bottom of the seventh. The Yankees would score eight unanswered um, following that. They would score seven runs in the top of the eighth, of course, topped off by a three-run home run from Josh Donaldson, um, and they would go on to win this game 15-7, to like I said. On the losing end of this matchup, the hometown Chicago White Sox were let out by their starting pitcher Dylan Seas. Seas allowed six earned runs off of six hits in four innings pitch. He would strike out 11 batters and walk two. The loss would go to the White Sox setup relief pitcher Joe Kelly. Kelly allowed five earned runs off of one hit as he would not make it through the eighth inning. He would strike out a batter and walk four. With this loss, Joe Kelly is 0-1. In the White Sox batting lineup, their left fielder A.J. Pollock went 2-3 for three with an RBI and two runs. And then their second baseman, Leirby Garcia, would end up going 2-4 for four with two RBIs and a run. On the winning end of this matchup, the New York Yankees saw the start go to Luis Gill. Gill would allow four earned runs off of five hits in the four innings he pitched. He would strike out five and walk two. The win would go to the Yankees' setup relief pitcher, Jonathan Loisiga. Uh, he would go on to allow two earned runs off of one hit as he pitched the seventh inning. He would walk a batter. He picked up his first blown save of the year. However, Loisica also picked up his first win. He's now 1-1 one one this year. In the Yankees batting lineup, their elite second baseman, DJ LeMay, he would go 3-5 for five with an RBI and two runs. Their elite right fielder, Aaron Judge, went 2-4 for four with four RBIs and three runs as Judge hit his 11th home run of the year. The Yankees' elite designated hitter, John Carlos Sand, went 3-4 for four with six RBIs and three runs. He went on to hit his 8th and ninth home runs of the year. Their third baseman and former American League MVP, Josh Donaldson, went 2-5 for five with three RBIs and a run. He hit his third home run of the year. And then their catcher, Kyle Higashioka, went 2-3 for three with a run. With this win, the New York Yankees are 23-8. and eight. That is the best record in the American League East. They've now won their last four games. Um, only the Astros have a longer active winning streak in the American League. The Yankees have now won eight of their last 10 games. They are sitting four and a half games ahead of the second place Tampa Bay Rays in their division. With this loss, the Chicago White Sox are 15 and 15. They are tied with the Cleveland Guardians for the second best record in the central behind the Twins. The White Sox have lost three of their last 10. They are sitting two games behind the Twins right now. Last but not least, jumping out to Dodger Stadium, the LA Dodgers hosted the Philadelphia Phillies. Going into the ninth inning, the score was tied at seven, but the Phillies would go on to break that tie with a wild pitch by Daniel Hudson that would bring Odubel Herrera to the plate. And then Bryce Harper's sacrifice fly would put them up by two as they won it nine to seven. On the losing end of this matchup, the hometown LA Dodgers saw the start go to Tyler Anderson. Anderson would allow seven earned runs off of 10 hits in the six innings he pitched. He would strike out five batters. The loss would end up going to the Dodgers closer to Daniel Hudson. Hudson would allow two earned runs off of two hits in the ninth inning. He would strike out a batter and walk one. With this loss, Daniel Hudson is one and three. In the Dodgers batting lineup, their elite shortstop Trey Turner went three for four with two runs. Their catcher Will Smith would end up going three for four with three RBIs and a run. Um, and then their elite center fielder Cody Bellinger ended up going one for five with an RBI and a run. He had his fifth home run of the year. Their left fielder Chris Taylor went two for five with an RBI. On the winning end of this matchup, the Philadelphia Phillies saw the start go to Zach Wheeler. Zach Wheeler would allow three earned runs off of six hits in the 5.1 innings he pitched. He struck out seven batters and walked one. The win would go to the Phillies setup relief pitcher, Andrew Bellotti. Bellotti would allow no earned runs as he finished off the eighth inning. He would walk a batter. He picked up his first one of the year. He's 1-0. The save went to the Phillies' closer, Corey Kniebel. Kniebel would have pitched the entire ninth inning as he allowed nowhere in runs and only allowed one hit. He would walk two batters in the ninth, still picked up his win. In the Phillies' batting lineup, their elite designated hitter in the reigning National League MVP, Bryce Harper, would go two for four with three RBIs and a run as he had his seventh home run of the year. Their second baseman, Gene Segura, went two for four with two runs. And then their catcher, JT Real Muto, would go two for four with a run as well. With this win, the Philadelphia Phillies are 15 and 17. They are tied with the defending World Series champs, Atlanta Braves, for the second best record in the National League East. The Phillies have won six of their last, they've won four of their last 10 games as they've won their last two. They now sit six and a half games behind the division-leading New York Mets. 
with this loss, the LA Dodgers are now 20 and 10. Now every team in the, actually no, the Yankees are now the only team left in baseball with a single digit amount of losses after the Dodgers lost. The Dodgers are now on a two game losing streak as they've lost three of their last 10. They are sitting one game ahead of the second place San Diego Padres in their division. Both teams have 20 wins, but the Dodgers just have two losses at this point. That is what the MLB is looking like as we go into today's matchups. Um, and then it's really kind of looking through because, of course, today is Friday. None of these matchups are set to be on prime time. At 6.35 uh, in PNC Park, the Pirates are set to host the Cincinnati Reds. At 6.40 in Lone Depot Park in Miami, Pablo Lopez and the Miami Marlins are set to host the reigning Cy Young winner of the National League, Corbin Burns. Burns enters this matchup with a 1-2 record, holding a 186 ERA for the NL Central leading Brewers. Pablo Lopez enters his matchup with a 4-1 record holding a an ERA of just one flat. At 705 on ESPN Plus in Nationals Park, Josiah Gray and the Washington Nationals are set to host Framber Valdez and the Houston Astros. Josiah Gray enters his matchup with a 4 and 2 record holding a 3.45 ERA. Framber Valdez and the Houston Astros Framber Valdez enters his matchup with a 1 and 2 record holding a 3.34 ERA. At 710 in Comerica Park, uh, the Detroit Tigers are set to host the Baltimore Orioles as the Tigers look to be the last team in the American League to pick up a double-digit amount of wins. At the same time, at 7-10, the NL East leading New York Mets are going to host the Seattle Mariners as Max Scherzer is going to start for them. Max Scherzer enters his matchup with a 4-1 record, holding a 2.92 ERA this year. At 7-10 in Tropicana Field, Drew Rasmussen and the Tampa Bay Rays are going to host Kyle Gosman and the Toronto Blue Jays. At 7-20 on Apple TV Plus in Truist Park, Max Freed and the defending World Series champs Atlanta Braves are set to host the San Diego Padres, led by their elite starting pitcher, Yu Darvish. Um, as the Padres are sitting just one game outside of the lead for the NL West. Yu Darvish enters his matchup with a 3-1 record, holding a 4.05 ERA. Max Fried enters his matchup with a 4-2 record, holding a 2.68 ERA. At 8.05 in Globe Life Field, Dane Dunning and the Texas Rangers are going to host Nick Pavetta in the Boston Red Sox. At 8.10 in Target Field, Sonny Gray and the Minnesota Twins are set to host Aaron Savali in the Cleveland Guardians. At 8.10 in Guaranteed Raid Field in Chicago, Vince Velasquez and the Chicago White Sox are set to host the New York Yankees, who hold the best record in baseball as they're going to be led out by their elite ace, Garrett Cole. Garrett Cole enters his matchup with a 2-0 record, holding a 2.67 ERA. At 8.15 in Bush Stadium, Jordan Hicks and the St. Louis Cardinals are set to host um, Logan Webb in the San Francisco Giants. Uh, taking a look at 840 in Coors Field, Kyle Freeland and the Colorado Rockies are set to host Zach Greinke and the Kansas City Royals. At 940 in Oakland Coliseum, it looks as though Dalton Jeffries will make the start for Oakland. And then for Angels, it looks like it's going to be Chase Silseth out of Minnesota, out of Farmington, Minnesota. At 940 on Apple TV in Chase Field, Zach Davies and the Arizona Cardinals are going to host Drew Smiley and the Chicago Cubs. And then last but not least, at 10-10, the LA Dodgers, led by their goaded starting pitcher Clayton Kershaw, are set to host Kyle Gibson in the Phillies tonight. Um, Kershaw enters his matchup with a 4-1, 4-0 record, holding a 1.8 ERA at this point in the year. Taking a look at what's going on in FIFA, uh, starting off in the Premier League in England, the big game there was between Tottenham Hotspur and Arsenal. Arsenal's defender holding would pick up a red card early in the first half, um, but Tottenham would win it 3-1. to one. They would see a first half brace from Harry Kane, their elite English striker, and then Son Hung Min, their elite Korean forward, would score in the 47th minute. With this win, Tottenham Hotspur still sits in fifth place in the Premier League as they sit one point behind fourth place. Arsenal for that last Champions League spot. Both teams have two games left in their schedule. Um, even with this win, Chelsea technically hasn't clinched that third spot in England, um, but Arsenal now has two games ahead of them that they probably feel are must-win situations, and now Tottenham is most definitely back in the race. Taking a look at what happened in Spain, the top team in La Liga and the 2021-22 champs, Real Madrid, were going to beat Levante 6 to nothing. They would see their first goal come from Mondi in the 13th minute from Ferla Mondi. 
Their second goal will come from their elite French striker, Kari Benzema, in the 19th minute. Their third goal came from Rodrigo, their Brazilian forward, in the 34th minute. Uh, their fourth goal will come from their Brazilian forward, Vinicius Jr., as he would put them up 4 nothing at the half. And then Vinny's second half brace would give him the hat trick for the day. Real Madrid, of course, finished this game now 12 points clear of Barcelona with two games left in their schedule. Um, as Real Madrid has, of course, not let their title uh, slow their hopes down of dominating every game. But that's basically what happened yesterday. Taking a look at what is going on as we navigate through, there's not much going on today, but a lot of this soccer will resume tomorrow. Um, But with that said, I do want to thank everyone for listening to all 39 minutes of this piece. I want to thank the ESPN, the NBA, NHL, MLB, and FIFA sites for giving me all the information and the figures. Um, But with that said, um, I want to thank everyone for listening. I hope all is well. And once all of today's exhibitions and matchups are done, I'm going to come back tomorrow on Saturday, May 14th. So until then, thanks for listening. I hope all is well, and I'll catch you with more tomorrow. Peace out.